In this anniversary year, I would like to express our warmest thanks to all those who have helped build the European Directorate for the Quality of Medicines and Healthcare, the EDQM, and who have participated in its activities. In particular, I would like to mention the experts from national and European authorities, universities, scientific institutes and industry who, through their expertise in a wide variety of scientific fields, have made such valuable contributions to our work. Of course, I would also like to pay tribute to the EDQM staff, who ensure the smooth running of all the committees and expert groups and provide a link between the past and the future of our organization. An anniversary is a good time to take stock of past achievements and to reflect together about future challenges and prospects. The European Pharmacopoeia helps ensure that all European citizens receive the same quality of medicines. This objective forms the basis for the International Convention of the Council of Europe that was opened for signature in June 1964. Ever since then, the existing national pharmacopoeias have collaborated, pooled resources to build together a European pharmacopoeia. The growing cooperation with the European Union was consolidated in 1994 when this organization signed the convention. This signing was unprecedented in the history of the Council of Europe. Today, 37 member states and the European Union have signed the convention. There are also 27 observers from six continents, including the World Health Organization. An anniversary is a good time to dig up old photographs and reflect on the tremendous growth of the European Pharmacopoeia Commission, its work program and its secretariat. None of this could have happened without the unwavering support of our member states the colossal work of the 17 chairs of the Commission, thousands of experts, four secretaries to the Commission, and all the staff who have served over the years. The European Pharmacopoeia is now in its eighth edition and comprises nearly 2,600 texts. This has been a wonderful collective adventure. We have fond memories of all those who have contributed to the European Pharmacopoeia and the EDQM. Today, the EDQM has grown to nearly 300 staff members to keep up with the considerable increase in the missions entrusted to it. Since the adoption of the Convention on the Elaboration of a European Pharmacopoeia by the Council of Europe in 1964, this organization has seen a fantastic development and I would just like to mention a few, which are particularly symbolic. The first challenge of the organization was to prove itself rapidly by publishing a first edition of the European Pharmacopoeia, providing a set of standards harmonized throughout its signatory states, and hence paving the way for free movement of medicines and access to good quality medicines for citizens. For the last 20 years, the EDQM has also continuously expanded activities related to the procedure for the certification of suitability to the monographs of the European Pharmacopoeia and the European Network of Official Medicines Control Laboratories established in 1994. Now, since 2007, the EDQM has been entrusted with additional missions so that it is now also responsible for activities and programs in the field of blood transfusion, organ transplantation, pharmaceuticals and pharmaceutical care, and consumer health protection. While these examples show how the EDQM has evolved, come up with innovative solutions, 
and acted effectively over the past 50 years, we have to acknowledge there are numerous challenges ahead of us. Together we will follow the course charted by our predecessors. The European Pharmacopoeia, like all the other missions of the EDQM, is a success story, a perfect example of a European collaboration with a human dimension. It deals with issues that Europeans care about. Our sole objective is and shall remain the protection of public health. And I'm sure that together we will always find the means and solutions to adapt to our constantly changing environment.